Hello, HitFilm users. Axel Wilkinson here. In this tutorial, I wanted to look at using templates in HitFilm 2 Ultimate. One of the great features the Ultimate version offers is the ability to import and export composite shots, which allows us to set up complex scenes involving multiple layers and save them as templates so we can easily use them over and over again. We'll create a couple of cool title effects, and when we're done, you'll have those templates so you can continue to use them forever and ever. So our first template will be for a rack focus effect, or a pull focus. So we'll start by creating a new composite shot, which we will name rack focus title. Now create a second composite shot, and name this one footage. And now go back to the rack focus title timeline, and add the footage comp into our main title comp. Now we need to import some footage just to work with to set this up. It doesn't really matter what the footage is. Uh, we just need to have something here to create the animation. So import any old footage that you'd like, and then select the footage timeline, and drag your footage into it. Then switch back to the Rack Focus Title Comp. Okay, so there's our footage in this embedded composite. And now we'll use the Text tool to create our actual title. So just drag a rectangle there, and enter some placeholder text, and then select that, and we'll use the text panel to adjust the settings to get the appearance that we're after. We'll go through the settings that I'm using, so you can match them if you want, but it's important to understand that you can customize any of these settings to suit your own style or the project you're working on. I'm going to use Georgia for my font. For the size, I'm going to use 170. I will center the paragraph, and then for the color, I'm just going to bring it down from white to a light gray. Now with that layer selected, go into the Controls panel, and in the Transform Properties, zero out the X position, just to make sure that we're perfectly centered in the frame. Now we're going to go to the Effects, and in the Generate folder, let's add 3D Extrusion to our text, and in the Controls for that, set the Depth to 75, and then in the Environment Map, choose our Footage Layer. Now the cool thing here is because we're choosing a composite, we can replace the footage contained in it with any other footage, and it will immediately update the environment map on this effect. So that's a bit heavy, so I'm going to reduce the amount to 50%. And then let's rename our text layer to something that helps us keep track of what it is. So I'm just going to name this Location. And now we'll use Blur to make sure that the title and the background are not in focus at the same time to create our Rack Focus effect. So first we need to add a Blur effect to both of our layers. So we'll drag that to the text, and then drag a copy to the Footage Comp. Make sure your playhead is on frame 0, and then in both of these Blur effects, enable animation for the Radius setting, and then on the Text Transform Properties, enable keyframing for the Scale. Set the scale to 90. For the blur radius on the text, we'll leave that at 5. And for the blur radius on the footage, we'll set that to 0. Now advance one second on the timeline. And now for the footage blur radius, we'll set a value of 15. For the blur radius on the text, set a value of 0. And then up for the scale, set that back to 100. So, at this point, you can see how we get that rack focus effect going on, and the title zooms up a little bit. So now we need to do the opposite of that at the end of the title. So we'll advance to the 6 second mark, and here we just need to add a new keyframe with the current value for each of these properties. So we'll use the little plus button, select each of our three properties we're animating, and add a keyframe. And on this frame, we also want to enable keyframing for the opacity of the text, so we can make it fade out at the end of the title. Then we'll advance to the 7 second mark, set the opacity to 0, set the scale to 90, set the blur radius on the text to 5, and set the blur radius on the footage comp to 0. Okay, let's go ahead and save this project now. I'm going to save mine to the desktop as templates. You can, of course, save yours to whatever location you prefer. And now let's just jump back and play through this to see the final effect. All right, so there it is. Now to use this template in other projects, we just have to swap out the footage behind the title. In order to prepare for that, let's go ahead and delete this footage from the timeline. And instead, 
Let's add a new text object here that just reminds us that this is where we want to put our footage. So I'm going to center that just to make it look nicer. And then I will make sure that it's down at the bottom so it ends up underneath our other title. And then to finish off this template, let's open the properties and we'll just change the duration to seven seconds. I should have centered the X value for our second title earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so that was fun, right? Shall we do another? Very well, let's create a new composite shot again. And this one we will name Lens Flare Title. Inside, we'll create a new text layer and add some placeholder text to it. And then for this template, I'm going to use the Arial font in a bold italic with a size of 100 and center it. And for the color, I'm going to use a light blue. Adjust the height of that a bit. Okay, now to set up for the animation on this effect, go to frame 7 and adjust the position so that this is down in the lower third. If we open the transform controls, set both position values to minus 250, and that should do nicely. And then enable keyframing for the position property. But before we start animating, let's go ahead and create our lens flare. So create a new plane, make sure it's black, and let's name this lens flare. And then in the effects, we can drag the light flares effect onto our plane. So there's that. In the light flares controls, choose the anamorphic enterprise preset, and then set the intensity to 0 0.7. For the layer properties, let's change the blend mode to add, and that's going to remove the black plane so our text is visible again. And now let's close the layer properties, open the hotspot position, and here we'll animate the center position to control the movement of the flare. So first bring the Y position downward until that long blue line aligns with the bottom of your text. Then shift the X value to the right until the hotspot lines up with the end of our text object. Now our elements are all in place, so enable keyframing for the hotspot position center, and we can add some motion here. So first, we're on frame 7, remember? That's where our title comes together. So let's jump back to frame 0, and for the hotspot center, set the X value to 2000, which throws it way off this side of the screen. Now for our text layer, set the position X value to minus 2200. And that moves it way off the left side of the screen. So over the first seven frames, these two elements will come flying together into the frame. Then advance the playhead to three seconds, and there we'll set the X position for the text to 170. Now for the light flare center, we'll just shift that X value over until it lines up with the opposite end of our text. Now advance to seven frames past three seconds. And for the center, we'll use a value of minus 2000. And for our text position, we'll use an X value of 2200. So our two elements now cross the screen in opposite directions, slowing down in the middle to give us a chance to read the text. That looks pretty good, but I think some motion blur could help with the faster motion. So select the text layer, and in the layer properties, we'll enable motion blur. And you can see how that adds some blur while the name flies into place there. But if we select the lens flare plane, we can't actually use this motion blur control because the plane itself doesn't move. It's the effect that's applied to the plane that actually has the movement. So instead of using this motion blur, we'll use the motion blur effect in the blur folder. This motion blur cleverly examines the movement within the contents of a layer and then simulates a motion blur based on the movement that's occurring. So just drag that effect onto our lens flare plane, and now the faster the lens flare moves, the more blur gets applied to it. Okay, now let's open the properties for this composite shot, and we'll change the duration to four seconds. And with the motion blur applied, real-time playback isn't quite as smooth, so I've preview rendered this just to give you an accurate uh, depiction of what the final effect looks like. So if we watch through that, there's the final result of our second template, which is now ready to go. So save the project again, 
and let's take a look at how to use these templates in other HitFilm projects. First, go to the media panel, and here's our lens flare title. And if you right click on that and choose Save As, you can see here we have the option to save a HitFilm composite shot. And so then we could import that composite shot into any other project in HitFilm 2 Ultimate. So save this one as lens flare title. I'm going to save it to the desktop again, but you can save it wherever. And now that is exported and ready to import and use wherever we want. But for our first template, the rack focus title, that won't work because this template involves an embedded composite shot that contains our footage. And if we just export our rack focus title, it won't include the footage composite shot. So for this one, we're going to use a different approach. So now let's switch to a different project. And the idea, of course, is that this can be any project you want. The template can be used anywhere. And so now we want to import those templates so that we can use them on this project. So if we choose Import Composite Shot, we can go to our desktop. And let's start by choosing our Lens Flare Title Hit Film Composite Shot. And we'll open that. And you can see it opens in its own little folder. So in this folder, we have the composite shot itself and then any assets that are involved in it. So if we'd used footage, then the footage would get imported along with it. In this case, we just have our lens flare plane in there, but everything we need is grouped together there. Now, an exception is embedded comps are not imported as well. But now we can switch to the editor and then we can just drag this composite shot onto the timeline wherever we want. And in this case, because a plane is involved, We've got a black background contained here, so we just need to go into the controls for this composite shot, change the blend mode to add to remove the black, and there we go. Our title is in place. Now from there, we can go back into the lens flare title comp, and we can change the text to whatever name we need to use. And there we have it. Now, if you wanted to use multiple copies of this title, perhaps for each of the leading actors in your film, then you can just import multiple copies of the template and use different text in each copy. This saves a lot of work as you only have to set up the animation for the titles one time. Now, how about our rack focus title? Well, go back to the import menu, and even though it's not actually specified in the menu, we can also use the import composite shot command to import an entire project. So select that, choose our templates project, and hit open. And now we get a window which lists all of the composite shots contained in that project. The nice thing here is that when you select a composite, any media or embedded comps it contains will also be imported. So if we select the rack focus title, because we know that's the title we want, we don't have to remember that the footage comp is embedded in that. We can just select the one comp, import it, and everything associated with that composite, including embedded composite shots, is automatically imported with it. So now let's look at how to set up this template. This one's a little bit different because it uses footage. And so the first thing we need to do is determine what video clip we're going to use with the template. Now I'm going to use it on this clip, which is right down here. So we need to open the footage timeline and add our footage here. We've used only a portion of this clip on the editor timeline, so I'm going to drag that same portion and drop it above the text layer. That way the text is completely hidden. And remember that our rack focus title is seven seconds long. So as long as the clip we drop in here is more than seven seconds long, we'll be just fine as far as the duration. Now when we go in to the editor, we can grab our rack focus title and we just line the start of our template up there with the start of our clip. And if we play through that, you can see that the transition at the end from our title clip into the other clip is seamless. You may notice that there is an audio track contained in both of these titles as well. And we can easily remove that by just unlinking and then select the audio portion and delete it. With the lens flare template, it doesn't really matter if this is here or not because there is no audio, but depending on what footage you use with the rack focus title, 
since we do have a copy of this footage in the title itself, you could end up with doubled audio, which might get too loud. And so you're probably going to want to delete the audio portion of that template. But there you have it. There's our templates all set up. And now, if you've followed along all the way through, you have both of these templates to use as often as you'd like from here to eternity. So hopefully that gives you an overview of how to create and work with more templates on your own so you can create additional effects or titles or whatever. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this slightly longer than I intended tutorial. Hopefully it held your interest. Subscribe to our channel to catch the new tutorials we have on the way. And until next time, I bid thee farewell.